In this glorious video on periodic trends, that is periodic properties of the elements, I'm going to teach you, my dear students, about atoms and ions' individual sizes. Let's begin. So, in general, atom sizes get smaller as you go to the right across a row or up a column on the periodic table. Therefore, francium is the largest element and helium is the smallest. You could conversely say then that atoms generally get larger as you go to the left across a row or down a column on the periodic table. So this begs the question, why? Why do atoms get larger going down a column? Well, to answer this question, let's start by just picking any column on the periodic table. For example, let's go ahead and grab this oxygen column right there and zoom in on it a little more closely. So what do we see as we go down the rows of this column? Well, drawing on our knowledge of electron configurations that we discussed in an earlier chapter, linked to in the description below or floating over my head as a link, the outermost orbital for the elements in this block, that is oxygen up top, is going to be a 2p orbital. For sulfur, it's going to be 3p, selenium is 4p, tellurium is 5p, and so forth down to livermorium. Now, what do we know about the relative sizes of these orbitals? Well, yeah, 2p orbitals, which are three dumbbells straddling the nucleus of that oxygen atom, are going to be smaller than 3p's, which will be smaller than 4p's, which will be smaller than 5p's, and so forth. They all have the same shapes. It's just that because the principal quantum number, 2, 3, 4, and 5, gets larger, the size of those orbitals gets larger. Thus, the reason why elements get larger as you go down a column is because their principal quantum number, n, is getting larger. Hence, larger principal quantum number equals larger size. Make sense? Good. This begs the question then, why in the world do atoms get smaller as you go to the right across a row? To answer this, let's just pick a row. I'm going to go ahead and grab the lithium row right here that I've got in this pink box, and then we'll zoom in on it a little bit more closely. So you'll notice, drawing on your electron configuration knowledge, that the outermost filled orbital for lithium and beryllium is 2s, and the outermost filled orbitals for boron through neon are 2p orbitals. As I just pointed out, as you go left to right across a row, the size of these atoms gets smaller. So based on what I taught you a moment ago about going down a column, you might wonder, is it because I'm getting a larger principal quantum number as I go from 2s to 2p? The answer is no. In other words, as we go left to right on a row, do we get any higher energy shells or higher principal quantum number? The answer, of course, is no. The energy level of a 2s orbital is n equals 2, and of 2p orbitals is n equals 2. So I cannot use the same argument going across a row as I do going down a column. So what do we get as we go across a row? Yeah, you'll notice we get more protons, because the number of protons in an atom is equal to its atomic number, or the box in which it appears. So lithium has three protons, beryllium has four, boron has five, and so forth. So how does that affect size? Well, atoms get smaller going left to right across a row, not because they have larger shells or larger orbitals, but because they have more protons. Protons in the nucleus actually suck electrons in because each additional proton gives the atom a greater effective nuclear charge or Z effective that we discussed in our previous video. We see then that as Z effective goes up, size of an atom goes down. More protons in the nucleus actually makes an element smaller, not bigger. And that can be confusing sometimes because generally we tend to think more equals bigger. And in the case of protons, that's not true. The size of an atom is all determined by the outermost cloud of electrons occupied. Another proton is not going to make the atom bigger. Another proton actually sucks that electron cloud in more and makes the atom overall smaller. Now that we know this general trend on size, we're going to move on to another topic, atomic radius. So what is an atomic radius? Well, an atom's radius, also called its atomic radius, the radius of an atom, is the distance from its nucleus to the outside of its outermost orbital. For example, in a simple hydrogen atom, its only filled orbital is a 1s orbital. The distance from its nucleus to the outermost edge of that orbital is called its atomic radius. Thus, an atom's atomic radius helps convey the size of its electron cloud, this region of space occupied by its electrons. Now, what is a bond length? Well, when two atoms bond, the distance between their nuclei is called the new molecule's bond length. For example, when I have two hydrogen atoms, each with their respective 1s orbitals, come together and bond, you'll note, of course, that each of them individually has its own atomic radius. So what would the overall combined distance of the bond that they form be? Yeah, it would be the combined distance of those radii. In other words, that distance right there. 
and that is the length of the bond they form, hence their new bond length. Thus, for an H2 molecule, you can hopefully see that that bond length would be equal to the atomic radius of a hydrogen atom times two. Now, this simple formula obviously does not work when the two atoms are of different elements that are bonded together. For example, if I've got a carbon atom bonded to a bromine atom, the carbon atom has its atomic radius, which happens to be this number, and the bromine has its atomic radius, which happens to be this number. Now, what would the overall length of the entire bond be? Yes, it would be the total distance between those two nuclei, which I arrive upon mathematically by just adding up those two numbers, which comes to this number right there. Now, for your reference, this figure taken from our text, and the text is referenced in the description below, shows us empirically measured values in angstroms of the atomic radii of all of the elements here on this slide. Additionally, here's a link that I will also post in the description below and have floating over my head in some way to a separate video done by some other YouTube channel that shows off individual atomic radii and their trend on the periodic table beautifully. We now have all of the knowledge necessary to answer these example problems. First, how do the sizes of atoms change as we move from left to right and from top to bottom on the periodic table? And then arrange these four atoms in order of increasing atomic radius. And lastly, using the table on the previous slide that I just showed, estimate the arsenic iodine bond length and then compare that estimate with the experimental bond length, which happens to be 2.55 angstroms. Now, if you want help on this, I've got some links in the description below and hopefully floating over my head to a separate video in which I will take you through these. Until my next one, my dear students, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.